he go poor sit para. It's Halloween, which means I stare at my shelves, scroll through my Steam library, trying to decide what to review. Horror is my least favorite video game genre, which is funny considering I absolutely love horror movies. It's mainly because I'm a huge wuss. See, a movie proceeds regardless of my reactions. I am forced to watch what's happening. But it, you give me a W key or a joystick and tell me to move forward down a dark hallway maybe, suddenly it's over. I can't do it. Which leads us to this year's Halloween special, Constantine. Both the movie and game came out in 2005, which, I've said it many times on this channel, is probably my favorite year of video game releases. I wouldn't say the movie is scary, but it is classified as such, but it's more so a comic book film. The original work is called Hellblazer, and it's pretty good, blah blah blah, but it doesn't matter because the game is adapting the movie, and there's a lot of differences between the movie and the comic. It gets even wilder if we start talking about the show and that animated one, but it really doesn't matter for the context of reviewing this game. The movie had so-so reviews at the time, but it's become a bit of a cult classic, and I myself love it. I'm a sucker for vague world building and what I'm gonna call movie artifacts. Like when Keanu burns a piece of Moses' shroud to purge the demons. It's the same reason I like the John Wick series. Yeah, yeah, guns and violence, but also the little moments of world building, like the currency or that ticket. Maybe I just like Keanu, yeah. But yeah, Constantine rules in my opinion. It's got my favorite depiction of Lucifer. So, revisiting this game is a classic case of me ruining my own childhood. I'm very rarely blinded by nostalgia, and I absolutely hate it. See... I loved this game as a kid. I rented it at a local Blockbuster, then I was like, man, I really want this game, then found it for like five bucks at this local GameStop that was still called Babbage's, and uh, it was on the original Xbox, which is how I decided to revisit this game. And let me tell you, the Xbox version runs like absolute garbage. This right here is off legit hardware. It does not run good. The frame rate is abysmal. It's also very dark in places where it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. And yeah, the game features a kind of first person view where you can see in the dark. But I don't think the, it was intended to play the whole game like this. It's just not a good way to play it. And I almost shelved this review. But then I remembered that Europe got a PC port. It ran pretty good, but kept crashing. So then I said, screw it. I booted up a PS2 emulator upscaled it to 1920 by 1080 widescreen, and cranked up the anti-aliasing, here we are. Generally, I don't like to change or alter what the original appearance of the game looks like for reviews, because if you comment on the graphics, then it's kind of a moot point, because that's not what it looked like back then. But for, I was just trying to get this game to run at a reasonable rate, so I can see if, you know, if I still enjoy it like I did back then. Um, well, after all that effort... Was it worth it? Was it worth salvaging this game for review? Uh, no, nah, it, it, it really wasn't. It's not a bad game, but it's, it's, uh, it's your typical licensed affair. First, let's start off with the good stuff. One, they went with a slightly different plot. Instead of having game levels between the same moments in the movie, they kind of go a different way. Like, the story starts the same way the movie does. Instead of movie clips, they just remade it with, you know, the in-game graphics. So you're like, okay, this is going to be a rehashing of the movie. But then how Constantine meets Angela is different. The first Papa Midnight interaction has a completely different dynamic. I could keep pointing out differences, but the point is the change in direction kind of motivates you to keep going. Like, how crazy is this going to be? And I kind of appreciate when licensed games do this because you end up getting different angles or different point of views. Like, there's some really cool cinematic shots in these cutscenes. Like, watch this one. Beeman. Yeah. Nothing from Hennessy? All right, I'm at the meat locker. Going in.
can't we just skip the foreplay? Good. Someone's home. Yeah, it was really well done composed. I, I really like that scene. This leads me to the atmosphere. Constantine does the whole silence when not fighting, music when the guns start blasting. So when you're milling about a level, the silence really does create a spooky atmosphere. And the spook factor isn't too crazy, man. You got furniture falling and stuff, but that's about it. There's not any jump scares from what I remember. Um, my kind of horror game, really. I didn't fly out on my chair at any point. I uh, got my heart racing from time to time, but nothing crazy. The level design's good, no complaints. The environments are diverse. Even though you are in a city, it's dynamic. You've got apartment buildings, morgues, police stations. Possibly the coolest location is this Hell Museum. Dude, this is so cool looking from the outside. I absolutely love this. The Hell levels, while a gimmick, add some variety to the levels. Find a puddle of water, cast a spell, now everything's a little different. The weapons are cool. You got these two pistols, which are called the Witch's Curse. You actually start with one, but you quickly find a second one. You get the Crucifier, which shoots nails. Haha, <laughs> get it. The Holy Shotgun that shoots a cross. A flamethrower that's the absolute goat. There's also like a crossbow and a couple other weapons, but really nothing beats the shotgun and the flamethrower. The game's also pretty laid back as you're never really hurting for ammo. The nails you fire out of the crucifier can be retrieved, so it's kind of hard to run out of ammo for it. Every few feet is some kind of ammo stash as well. But this is where I kind of want to talk about the bad components, which is the enemies. A diverse arsenal is met with a diverse enemy roster, which sounds good in practice. Some weapons work better against certain enemies, but this is kind of where I begin to hate this game. You also have throwables, where one is the Scarab Beetles, where after being thrown, it kind of like freezes all the uh, demons in their place. But the one you use often is the Holy Water. So if you have a demon half-breed, you have to throw the Holy Water on them to expose their like demonic side. Then you can kill them. There's also some enemies that will possess dead bodies and you have to knock the demon out of the host body and kill that demon before it gets back into the host body and it doesn't sound too bad at first and you do get the spell that kills them both at once when cast but then you get a whole level dedicated to them and there's times where there'll be like five in a room and your shots are being blocked when you're trying to kill the other ones and then it really sucks when there's like 50 enemies going on including these and you're just trying to juggle everything at once then you got this enemy that can only be killed by shooting it in the back you got ones that climb on the ceiling and you got flying enemies that are really hard to hit and having this kind of rock paper scissors format to the enemies would be cool but it's honestly kind of frustrating because you don't have a roll button you don't have a dodge button there's no really sidestep so while you got enemies you got to shoot in the back you got to get out of the way and you have to get around so you can get a clean shot of the demons that are infecting corpses there's just no way to fluidly move around to take care of the enemies before you there's a recipe here for a good title but it's actually pretty tedious and gets boring really, really fast. Someone asked in one of the many discords I'm in, what are some mid-tier games, like 5 out of 10 type games? It's easy to say what the best ones are and even easier to find the worst, but what about like middle of the road? Well, here you go. Here's the prime example. Constantine 2005. It's a corridor shooter. You run straight and shoot. Here's a boss fight that takes literally forever. And I just really didn't super feel like finishing this. It, it's just, it just bored me, man. It doesn't help that the cutscenes are also really sleepy due to the voice acting. Jack of asses. <laughs> Constantine, been gone so long. You must have some exquisite artifacts or tempting relics for Papa. Hmm? You in the market for a dead half-angel? 
So someone closed the book on Thomas Herio. This all adds up to a bad moon arising, John. Papa would make himself scarce. Not helpful, Midnight. Beeman's got a problem. He can't decode the nasons to demoniac. I need to know what it says. Always after something. <laughs> What's in it for me? I'll forgive your previous debt. <laughs> Constantine forgives? The world has gone mad. You done? Like, man, why is the guy voicing Constantine sound so bored? I don't know if it's the VA or the direction he was given. But regardless, this this whole thing is just it's just very sleepy, man. Constantine was made by the same dudes who made the Conflict series. I don't really know why I put this in the script. I don't really have anything to say about it. I just felt like bringing it up. Conflict Desert Storm is a game I get asked to review all the time, and I may do it because I actually enjoy that one. Uh, I wish I hadn't played this, man, because in my brain, this was a forgotten masterpiece. There are so many good third-person shooters out there, or just shooters in general, that I'd avoid this one unless you are really curious or you're going for a play every third person shooter ever type challenge. It's also not spooky enough for you masochists who like your heart attacks around this time of year. Speaking of horrific endeavors, I got a video in the works that's worse than this game, so I guess I should count my blessings. It's about to get a whole lot worse. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's this year's Halloween game. This is a struggle for me every year. I was actually working on Oogie's Revenge. Yeah, you know, the 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 Devil May Cry game. I was even had this plan to like trigger everybody by calling it the best Dante's Inferno clone, but that game was somehow just as sleepy, if not sleepier, than this. Like it had a pretty cool presentation, but uh, I felt myself like napping in my chair as I played it. And uh, yeah, so hope everyone has a great Halloween. Um, uh, I'm I'm not doing anything special, and so as as usual. I'll see you in the next episode of whatever that may be. Actually, I know what it is, and uh, I'm not looking forward to it. Maybe I'll do something in between because it's going to take me a while, but the next big review is, is uh, it's pretty bad, so I'll see you there.